This is the second in a series of two pre-lecture videos on money for the course Global Business Economics. I'm David Frankel, a professor at Melbourne Business School. In this video, I will assume familiarity with the ideas that are introduced in the first video in this series, which is titled Money One Basic Concepts. Let's get started. We begin by defining five key monetary aggregates. The first is currency, abbreviated CUR. Currency is defined as bills and coins that are held by the public, by households, and by firms other than banks. The second aggregate is banks reserves, abbreviated RES. Reserves consist of funds that banks maintain in order to service withdrawals and to clear checks. Reserves have two components. The first is cash that the bank keeps in its vaults, ATMs, and teller windows. The second is the balance of the bank's exchange settlement account. This is a special account maintained by the bank at the RBA that is used to clear checks drawn on the bank. The third aggregate is base money, abbreviated M0. It is defined as a sum of currency CUR and reserves RES. Base money is also known as the monetary base. The fourth aggregate is deposits, abbreviated DEP. These consist of the checking and savings account balances of the public. Finally, the money supply M, or simply money, consists of currency CUR plus deposits DEP. This fits the economist's definition of money as the funds that are available for immediate payment by the public. We next derive some relationships among the five monetary aggregates. We will assume that for each dollar in deposits, the public sets aside C dollars in cash. The parameter C is called the currency drain ratio. Our assumption implies that currency CUR equals the currency drain ratio C times deposits DEP. But recall that money M equals the sum of currency CUR and deposits DEP. By the prior equation, we can substitute C times DEP for CUR in this formula. Simplifying, money M equals the product of 1 plus C on the one hand and deposits DEP on the other. We will also assume that for each dollar in deposits, a bank sets aside R dollars in reserves and lends out the rest. Thus, reserves RES equal R times deposits DEP. The parameter R is called the reserve ratio. Now recall, that base money M0 is defined as the sum of currency CUR and reserves RES. We now use the above equation circled in red to substitute C times deposit DEP for currency CUR. And we use the equation that is circled in blue to substitute R times deposits DEP for reserves RES. We then simplify the result to obtain a new expression for base money M0. It equals the product of deposits DEP on the one hand and C plus R on the other. Rearranging, we conclude that deposits DEP equals base money M0 divided by C plus R. Now recall our earlier equation in which money M equals the product of 1 plus C times deposits DEP. Into this equation, we substitute the expression we just derived circled in green. We conclude that money M equals the product of base money M0 and the ratio of 1 plus C to C plus R. We will use the Greek letter mu to denote this ratio. The parameter mu is referred to as the money multiplier. To illustrate the uses of these equations, we now work through two examples. In the first, we will assume that the currency drain ratio C and the reserve ratio R are known. In this case, base money alone suffices to calculate the other four monetary aggregates. In particular, 
Let's assume the currency drain ratio C is 5%. The reserve ratio R is 15% and base money M0 is 200. These assumptions are depicted in the table. We first compute deposits DEP. From the prior slide, it equals base money M0 divided by C plus R. This equals 200 divided by 0 0.2, which is just 1,000. Next, we compute currency CUR. By the prior slide, it equals the product of the currency drain ratio C and deposits DEP. This is just 0 0.05 times 1,000, which is 50. Reserves RES are next. By the prior slide, they equal the product of the reserve ratio R and deposits DEP. This is just 0 0.15 times 1,000, which equals 150. Money M equals the sum of currency CUR and deposits DEP. This is just 50 plus 1,000, which equals 1,050. We finally turn to the money multiplier mu, which is the ratio of 1 plus C to C plus R. This is just 1.05 divided by 0 0.2, which equals 5.25. In our second exercise, the currency drain ratio C and the reserve ratio R are unknown. We now compute them using data on money M, currency CUR, and base money M0, all of which are publicly available. In particular, let us assume that base money M0 is 200, currency CUR is 50, and money M is 1050. These raw data are depicted in the table. We first compute deposits DEP. By definition, money M equals currency CUR plus deposits DEP. Rearranging this formula, we can express deposits DEP as money M minus currency CUR. In our setting, this equals 1050 minus 50, or 1000. We next turn to reserves. By definition, base money M0 equals currency CUR plus reserves RES. Rearranging this formula, we can express reserves RES as base money M0 minus currency CUR. In our example, this equals 200 minus 50, or 150. As for the currency drain ratio C, we know from a prior slide that currency CUR equals C times deposits DEP. Rearranging this formula, the currency drain ratio C equals currency CUR divided by deposits DEP. In our example, this equals 50 divided by 1000, or 0.05. Regarding the reserve ratio R, we know that reserves RES equal R times deposits DEP. Rearranging as before, the reserve ratio R equals reserves RES divided by deposits DEP. In our example, this equals 150 divided by 1000, or 0 0.15. Finally, we show a different way to compute the money multiplier mu. Solving for mu in the equation m equals mu times m0, we obtain mu equal to m divided by m0. In the present case, this is just 1050 divided by 200, which equals 5.25 like before. We now study some implications of our results for monetary policy. We begin with a key fact. The RBA has sole control over base money. It raises base money by buying bonds from banks or the public. It lowers base money by selling bonds to banks or the public. The actions of the public and banks may affect the other aggregates, but they have no effect on base money. To see how this works, let's do a simple thought experiment in which the RBA pays $1 to a bank in return for a bond. The bank puts the dollar bill in its vault. This raises reserves by $1. Since the dollar is not held by the public, currency remains unchanged. Hence, the RBA's bond purchase raises base money, the sum of currency and reserves, by exactly one dollar. Where might the dollar go next? Well, the public might withdraw the dollar or borrow it from the bank. This action of the public raises currency by one dollar and lowers reserves by the same amount.
showing that the RBA does not control these two aggregates. But importantly, base money, the sum of currency and reserves, remains unchanged. Later, the public might transfer the dollar to a bank, for instance, by depositing the dollar in an account or using it to repay a loan. This action lowers currency by $1 and raises reserves by $1, reinforcing the fact that the RBA does not control these two aggregates. However, base money is again unchanged. Summarizing, the dollar remains in base money until the RBA chooses to withdraw it, for instance, by selling a $1 bond to a bank. Imagine now that something happens that shakes the public's confidence in the banking system. For instance, a large bank may fail, leading the public to expect more bank failures. In response, some households might choose to stash their cash under a mattress rather than depositing it in a bank. In our setting, this is captured by an increase in the currency drain ratio C, the ratio of currency to deposits. Now recall our formula for money M. It equals 1 plus C divided by C plus R all multiplied by base money M0. This formula is decreasing in the currency drain ratio C. Hence, the rise in C that results from the public's lost confidence in the banks leads to a decline in the money supply. Intuitively, shrinking deposits force banks to restrict their lending, which causes the money supply to contract. This decline in the money supply, in turn, tends to depress economic activity. Why? Well, when firms can't get loans, they are forced to cut plan investment. This in turn causes a decline in output as shown in the pre-lecture video on the aggregate expenditure model. What might the central bank do? Well, by the preceding equation, the money supply M is an increasing function of base money M0, which is under the RBA's direct control. Thus, in order to counteract the increase in the currency drain ratio, the central bank can simply raise base money by buying bonds from banks or from the public. Intuitively, base money is the sum of currency and reserves. Thus, increasing base money satisfies the public's increased demand for currency, while also bolstering banks' reserves so that they can continue to lend. This concludes the GBE pre-lecture video, Money 2 Advanced Concepts. Thank you for watching.